Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Chapter 26 Trying to Make Me a Sacrifice Oscorp Industries was a famous large enterprise on the level of Stark Industries in the Marvel Universe and both also had close cooperative relations with the military. Only, Stark Industries focused more on manufacturing conventional military weapons and equipment, and had closer cooperation with the military, becoming almost the first choice for cooperative enterprises. While Oscorp Industries focused more on researching and manufacturing high-tech future weapons as well as biogenetic medicine. If speaking in terms of combined strength, then without a doubt Stark Industries' overall power was stronger. After all, it was a family enterprise established in the 19th century. However, as a villain manufacturer, Oscorp's strength was similarly not weak. It was just that the high-tech equipment and genetic medicine they produced didn't seem to have successfully obtained cooperation with the military. Instead, they indirectly created several villains. Of course, this result was not unexpected, since Oscorp Industries chairman, Norman Osborn was himself the villain known as the Green Goblin. Don't know if Norman Osborn has become the Green Goblin yet at this time. In the afternoon, standing in front of the Oscorp Industries building with Gwen, Peter couldn't help but curiously think upon seeing the towering luxurious building. But there's currently no news about rampages from the Green Goblin. And based on Gwen having just become Spider-Woman half a month ago, he probably hasn't injected the serum to become the Green Goblin yet. How is it? Pretty nice right? I was also stunned silly the first time I came. Noticing Peter staring blankly at Oscorp Industries building in front of them, Gwen lightly nudged him with her elbow and chuckled while speaking. Let's go, I'll bring you inside for a tour. Although Gwen was merely an intern student, she acted as if she were the lady of the premises before Peter at that moment. Well, it's actually my second time here. Of course, Peter didn't say this joke out loud. After all, nobody would talk about embarrassing things that happened to themselves in front of pretty girls. Even if at this time, Peter didn't have any special feelings towards Gwen yet. However, Peter couldn't help but feel somewhat awkward as soon as they entered the company. Because first Gwen brought him to the front desk in order to apply for a temporary pass. Allowing him to tour the company afterwards. And by sheer coincidence, the one on front desk duty today was the same front desk clerk from last time. When Peter infiltrated the company and triggered the alarms before getting escorted to the police station by security. Hi Gwen, you came pretty early today. The front desk clerk dressed in professional black attire with a slender figure and beautiful features seemed very familiar to Gwen. She greeted Gwen affectionately upon seeing her. In front of one of the few friends she had in this company, Gwen also smiled and returned the greeting. School started today so we got out early in the afternoon. So I came over early. Oh right, let me introduce you. This is my classmate, Peter Parker. Gwen naturally did not forget her purpose and proceeded to point at Peter for an introduction. Classmate Parker, you, aren't you? The receptionist looked at Peter and just wanted to greet him out of politeness, but suddenly realized that the person in front of her seemed somewhat familiar. In the next moment, she remembered that Peter was exactly the intruder who was sent to the police station that day. After all, she was being criticized by her superiors for this very thing that day, and she naturally remembered it well. What's up, you guys met before? Looking at the receptionist's reaction, Gwen asked with some curiosity. Oh no, I recognize the wrong person. Your classmate looks a lot like a Hollywood celebrity Andrew Gar. What was his name again? Just when Peter was ready to say that thing that happened before, the receptionist actually slowly opened her mouth, explaining to Gwen that she had recognized the wrong person. And Peter keenly realized that she seemed to have an unnamed meaning in her eyes from the moment she looked at herself and Gwen. As if it was the look some people revealed when indulging in shipping couples. Don't tell me she thinks the reason I trespassed into Oscorp last time was because of Gwen? Almost instantly, Peter realized that the two seemed to have given the receptionist the wrong idea. 
Come to think of it, if he was a bit thinner, he does look quite alike. Even Gwen couldn't help but carefully observe Peter and came to a conclusion. Here you go, Parker. This time, don't lose it again. When the front desk clerk handed the process temporary pass to Peter, the look in her eyes seemed to warn Peter against getting kicked out again. Peter, let's go. I'll first take you to meet my intern mentor, Professor Connors. After obtaining the temporary visitor's pass, Gwen was prepared to first bring Peter to meet her intern mentor. After all, aside from giving him a tour, Gwen also hoped to have him intern here when she brought Peter to the company. All right, Gwen, I forgot to notify you. Professor Connors is currently receiving a very important guest right now and said not to let anyone disturb him. Just as they were about to leave the front desk, the front desk clerk suddenly recalled something and spoke to Gwen. All right, looks like we'll have to change plans. How about we go tour some of the experimental projects the company is working on first? Gwen looked at Peter apologetically, then made a suggestion. I'm good with anything, up to you. Peter naturally said indifferently. Well then, let's first take the elevator to the fourth floor biogenetic lab to take a tour, there is one of the coolest creatures there, spiders. For some psychological reason, the first thing Gwen wanted to show Peter was precisely the spiders that had gifted her special abilities. Spiders? You mean like Spider-Woman spiders? Peter stared at Gwen and slowly said. The two who finally reached a consensus prepared to take the elevator to the visiting area. Ding. Seeming quite fortunate, just as the two walked from the lobby towards the elevator hall. A somewhat sloppy-looking uncle wearing a shabby bag that completely clashed with this place hurriedly walked out from the elevator. As he walked, he kept occasionally looking back furtively, appearing rather sneaky. Someone come help catch that guy. He stole my stuff. Just as that weird man was about to walk past Peter and Gwen, another elevator door suddenly opened. A middle-aged man with one arm dressed in a white lab coat ran out from inside, pointing at that sloppy man and shouting loudly. Having his theft revealed, the sloppy man also dropped his pretense. His footsteps quickened from walking to running as he prepared to leave the company before security arrived. However, when he passed by Peter and Gwen, normally disinterested in meddling, Peter naturally completely ignored it as if nothing was happening. However, Gwen brimming with a sense of justice did not hesitate at all. She suddenly stretched out her leg to block his path. Thud. The middle-aged man suddenly tripped and fell forward eating shit, even sliding ahead several meters on the ground. Swish, clink clink clink. His bag also fell to the ground in that instant, with the items inside scattering all over the floor. The next moment, he seemed to completely disregard whether he was injured from the fall or not, also ignoring the other items. He simply grabbed one of the vials containing liquid from the many fallen on the ground. Then he stood up and ran towards the building exit without even turning his head. Among the miscellaneous items fallen on the ground, one vial somehow rolled from several meters away to Peter's feet with a gurgling sound. The crystalline green liquid within seemed to have some special allure to Peter, prompting him to want to pick it up. Thud. Peter suddenly raised his foot and viciously stomped down on that vial, shattering it. The crystalline green liquid splattered all over the floor. Trying to make me a sacrifice. No way in hell. Chapter 27, The Four-Handed, Hulk. What the hell happened? Professor Connors? Gwen, who had reached out to help, was seeing her mentor so anxious for the first time. That guy. He stole my regeneration serum. This new experimental serum is not yet complete. If used rashly, it could cause the human genes to collapse and kill a person. At this moment, Connors was sprawled on the ground in an undignified manner, hurriedly picking up other reagents that had rolled onto the floor while explaining to Gwen without even turning his head. Right. Call the police, there's something wrong with that guy's identity, I'm afraid it might cause more chaos later. After picking up all the reagents and putting them back in his bag, Professor Connors hugged the bag tightly. Then, suddenly recalling the other person's identity, he instructed Gwen worriedly. Hey, that guy's identity is certainly problematic. In fact, when that guy first walked out of the elevator, Peter had already recognized him. He was the Hulk, Dr. Banner, who had just escaped from the military's encirclement this morning. But when did Dr. Banner get involved with Connors? And he even stole his lizard transformation serum? Also, this Dr. Connors doesn't seem to be that bad. At this moment, Peter, who was standing by without saying a word, felt the situation was a bit strange. That's right, Dad. It's near the office building where I'm interning. Please send someone over quickly. 
Seeing the solemn and worried expression on her mentor's face, Gwen did not hesitate and called her police chief father directly. Phew, hope this doesn't make too much fuss. Seeing Gwen had called the police, Professor Connors finally breathed a sigh of relief. Then he finally noticed Peter standing next to Gwen. He asked Gwen somewhat puzzledly, By the way, Gwen, who is this? He is my classmate, Peter Parker. I originally wanted to bring him to see you, but I didn't expect this to happen. Gwen's face flushed slightly, explaining somewhat awkwardly. Nice to meet you, Peter Parker. Wait, Parker? Is your father? The mention of the surname Parker instantly reminded Professor Connors of his colleague who had worked with him on the genetic mutation project a few years ago. Sorry, we'll talk about these things later. I need to go back and tidy up my lab now. Gwen, why don't you take Parker on a nice tour around the company first? But soon he realized it was not the time to discuss these matters. He still needed to properly store the reagents in his arms. After apologizing to both of them, he hurriedly walked to the elevator and returned to his lab. I'm sorry, Peter. I didn't expect this to happen today. Gwen looked at Peter with an apologetic expression on her face. It's okay. Oh my god, what on earth is that? Help. There's a monster. Everyone run. The monster is attacking the city. Just as Peter was saying it was fine, a huge commotion came from outside the company. The two turned to look and saw countless panicked people running away in embarrassment. Sorry Peter. I suddenly remembered our band asked me to go to rehearsal this afternoon. I have to go first, see you at school tomorrow. Seeing the chaotic scene outside, Gwen immediately thought of an excuse. While speaking, she had already hurriedly run outside, not giving Peter a chance to speak at all. Ha, huh, I finally understand what it feels like to be suddenly stood up by a superhero. Looking at Gwen who ran out of the company hurriedly and rushed towards the source of the commotion against the crowd, Peter suddenly felt somewhat bitterly amused. But this is just as well. A few minutes ago dash. After Dr. Banner was dripped by Gwen, he grabbed a tube of serum in panic and ran out of the Oscorp building. Of course, Oscorp's security guards did not give up chasing him. And with Gwen calling the police, the nearest police who got the news also rushed over. After all, Banner was just a scientist, not good at running. In the end, he had no choice but to be blocked by two parties on a nearby street. Warning. Put your hands up and surrender immediately, otherwise we have the right to kill you directly. Seeing the offender had white skin, the police who rushed over did not directly perform American jiu-jitsu to make him reborn. Instead, they had their hands on their waists, warning Banner to surrender immediately. No, don't come over. I'm about to lose control. After the intense run just now, Dr. Banner was almost exhausted. At this moment, being surrounded by armed police, the primordial force in his body was about to lose control. The skin on his face had begun to turn green. What are you doing? Stop immediately, or we'll shoot. As ordinary police officers, they had never seen anything like this, someone's head starts turning green at the slightest disagreement. Without any hesitation, they pulled out their pistols from their waists and pointed them at Banner, who was already about to lose control. Roar. Suddenly, as the green color almost completely took over Banner's face, a beast-like roar came from his mouth. His body also began to swell rapidly. The green skin instantly burst through the already tattered clothes on his body. Only a pair of big green underwear made of unknown material barely covered his sensitive parts between his legs. Although you have saved me many times, I don't want to hurt anyone else. I'm sorry. While there was still a shred of sanity left, Banner did not hesitate to stab the stolen serum he took into his own body and injected it. No. The next moment, accompanied by a roar full of unwillingness, the last shred of clarity that belonged to Banner also completely disappeared. The body that was originally in the human category instantly swelled several meters high in that moment, like a ferocious beast. Requesting backup. Bang bang bang. The terrified police officers requested backup while shooting at the beast in front of them without any hesitation. Roar. The bullets hit the monster's body, making it emit a creepy howl. As if enduring incredible pain. The guns are actually effective? A few police officers couldn't help but glance at each other, then took another careful look at the pistols in their hands, their expressions full of surprise. Under these circumstances, the guns in their hands should not have had any effect at all. No. It's not because of the guns, but because of the monster itself. Suddenly, a policeman looked at the still wailing monster with shock all over his face and said. Beneath the green skin of the monster, 
There seem to be countless little worms squirming and writhing madly. Its already extremely huge body seemed to have grown even taller in this moment. The constant wriggling of the unknown objects also caused its green skin to keep swelling, like a rough sea, with surging waves. Puff puff puff. Suddenly, as the bulges grew higher and higher, its green skin could no longer withstand the pressure and instantly burst open. Countless viscous green fluids spewed from the bursting body parts, making people feel extremely nauseous just by looking at it. Raw. As the skin on its body continued to burst, the monster howled even more miserably at this moment as if it was suffering incomparably great pain. This, what on earth is going on? All the police officers looked at the extremely terrifying scene in front of them in horror, frightened to the point where their legs turned to jelly and they kept retreating. Suddenly, the bursting sounds and the monster's miserable roars stopped at the same time. Is it dead? The police officers looked at the monster whose skin was not intact at all, just standing there quietly, its head drooping as well, looking like it had completely died. Puff. Ah, it's still alive. Just as some cautious police officers were about to approach to check, suddenly, from the drooping head of the monster, a few green fingers protruded. F.C.K., run. Looking at the horrifying sight in front of them, all the policemen turned around and fled without hesitation. Slash only to see that the monster's head was suddenly violently and directly torn apart from the inside by two hands. Along with the monster's tattered skin, as if it were a piece of torn cloth, it was completely torn in half down the middle. A new monster, like a molting snake, crawled out of the torn skin. What was even more shocking was that this new monster had four thick arms. Chapter 28 The Crazy Four-Handed Hulk as a fellow scientist who was equally knowledgeable in biological genetics, Dr. Banner clearly knew that Professor Connor's regenerative serum was completely half-finished, or to put it more seriously, an outright failure. It lacked the most important part, the algorithmic formula that could perfectly fuse human and animal genes together. Even if a human used this serum, apart from the unacceptable result of turning into an inhuman or ghostly monster, there would only be a more serious result, because the human genes would not be able to fuse with the animal genes. The only thing left was the more serious one, the complete collapse of one's own genetic chain due to the inability to fuse two different genes. However, this was exactly the effect Banner wanted. He had thought about killing himself many times to get rid of the nightmares that woke him up every night. But he couldn't do it because of the Hulk's existence. Until today, he suddenly thought of using Professor Connor's failed genetic serum to cause his own gene sequence to collapse. Unfortunately, he underestimated the power of the Hulk. His failed suicide attempt inadvertently created an even more powerful and crazy monster, the four-handed Hulk. The two upper hands tore open the Hulk's tattered skin. An entirely new monster broke out of the cocoon. It put its four hands in front of itself, slowly clenched its fists and felt the power even greater and more terrifying than before. The next moment, the four-handed Hulk suddenly roared up to the sky. Roar. The crazy and ferocious roar instantly resounded throughout the entire city, as if announcing its rebirth to the world. As the roar ended, the Hulk lightly exerted force in its legs, and its whole body actually leapt several hundred meters high. And because it had four hands, it spread out its four arms. It actually gained the ability to temporarily hover in midair and control the direction it moved forward. As its body climbed to the apex of the height, looking down at the main street at the crowd of people coming and going, the dark green bidious face unexpectedly revealed humanized madness and ridicule. The next moment, its body suddenly plummeted from the sky. It directly stomped on a small sedan that was driving by. The poor little sedan had no idea that today would be the day it would be scrapped. In an instant, it was stomped flat by the incredibly terrifying strength. It even smashed a huge crater in the hard road surface. Oh my god, what on earth is that monster? Countless passers-by were instantly frightened by the scene in front of them, even forgetting to escape. Beep beep beep. Get out of the way. At the same time, a medium-sized van was rushing over rapidly from behind it. It was about to hit it. Urgent and harsh honks kept ringing out. On the Hulk's originally crazy face, a look of humanized disgust appeared again. The next moment, it suddenly turned its head. That's right, it was the body that didn't move, only the head rotated 180 degrees. Ah, what is this thing? The truck driver looked at the bizarre scene in front of him and was already scared silly. He immediately released the brake under his foot and stepped hard on the accelerator instead. It's better to run over the monster in front of you than to scare yourself to death. 
This was the only thought in the driver's mind at this moment. And, he succeeded. The truck instantly accelerated, rushing straight toward the monster ahead at high speed. Boom. Under such tremendous impact, an ordinary person would probably have been sent flying dozens of meters away. However, the Hulk was still standing in the same place, seemingly not having moved at all. And the truck that crashed into it was squeezed by its powerful body to form a huge crater. The front of the truck was almost completely caved in. Creak creak. The next moment, the Hulk's forearms twisted and rotated slowly, just like its neck. Then it grabbed the truck in front. Then it directly tore the truck in half from the middle caved in section. Without hesitation, it fiercely flung the two wrecked halves of the truck out like flying discs. Boom. The rapidly rotating half truck instantly smashed into a building in the distance. The terrifying impact caused it to hit the building violently like an airplane falling from the sky. The entire building was blasted out with a huge gaping hole. Help, my leg. Countless people were screaming and wailing in pain. Run. This monster isn't human at all. The stunned passers-by around also snapped back to their senses at this moment and fled in panic. Seeing the pedestrians running away like ants, a mocking look flashed across the Hulk's face. The next moment, it casually grabbed roadside parked vehicles with both hands. It tore them in half effortlessly from the middle. Then it threw them at the fleeing pedestrians without hesitation. Hey, big green guy, didn't your mom teach you not to litter? Suddenly, two silver-white spider silks appeared on one of the flung vehicle wreckages. The next moment, a slender figure in a black and white spider costume emerged abruptly. The spider silk spun the vehicle wreckage and threw it back at the Hulk. Tiny, crawler. The Hulk, who punched the flung back wreckage into pieces with one fist, was actually able to sputter out human words at this moment. The next moment, its whole body leapt up instantly at a speed that even Gwen did not anticipate. It charged towards her. Damn, how is it so fast? Gwen didn't expect such a clumsy-looking monster to be so fast. Even though the spider sense was frantically warning her, she couldn't dodge at all. She only managed to keep shooting webs at the Hulk's face as it rushed rapidly towards her. Damn, crawler. The webs shot all over its face making the Hulk even more furious. Clenching its fist, it threw a fierce punch at Gwen. Damn, how is this guy's strength dozens of times greater than that venom from last time? This was Gwen's only thought as she was sent flying by the punch. Poor Gwen had encountered two villains in a row whose powers far exceeded her own, making things very thorny for her. Boom. Her whole body was deeply embedded in the wall of a high-rise building. The tremendous impact made the whole building sway precariously. And Gwen, who took the punch head-on, felt even worse. That monster had almost beaten her to a pulp after just one exchange. However, just as Gwen was feeling the intense pain all over her body, her keen spider sense frantically warned her once again. F.C.K. She saw that monster smash its hands fiercely into the road for some reason. Then it erupted with tremendous strength, directly prying up the inches thick concrete road surface nearly 20 meters high. Then it smashed the dozens or even hundreds of tons of heavy concrete slabs viciously at her. Gwen's face turned as green as the monster's. What the hell should I do? Gwen desperately racked her brain for a solution. She could barely dodge to avoid a direct hit. But the dozen-story high rise behind her would probably collapse directly under the flying concrete slab. There was no telling how many people would be killed or injured at that time. With Gwen's kind and righteous personality, how could she just stand by and watch such a cruel thing happen? Sorry, Peter, it looks like I'm going to stand you up again tomorrow. The next moment, Gwen forcibly supported her heavily injured body. Her legs curled up on the wall of the building. She shot spider silks out towards both sides with her hands. Relying on the traction of the spider silks and the explosive power of her legs, Gwen was about to use her own body to take on the incoming concrete slab. However, the next moment, a familiar figure appeared almost instantaneously in front of her, as if teleporting over. The bright red gape fluttered in the wind. Chapter 29 The Crushing Posture It's him? Seeing the figure that suddenly appeared, Gwen couldn't help but reveal a hint of pleasant surprise on her face. Look, it's Superman. Great, we are saved. In the building, countless people discovered the figure floating outside the window at this moment. That figure standing tall in midair like a god caused the people in crisis to instantly erupt into cheers for surviving the disaster. Be careful. However, looking at the figure ahead, Gwen still couldn't help worrying for him in her heart. 
After all, although the man in front was called Superman, no one really knew whether he had the invincible power like Superman in comics. And the power of this green monster was something Gwen had just personally experienced. To be blunt, it was as strong as more than ten of her right now. However, in the face of Gwen's concern and the giant boulder rushing rapidly ahead that weighed at least a hundred tons, the figure ahead did not show any panic at all. He merely raised a hand. Boom. There was a soft sound, just like a splash caused by gravel falling into calm water. Gwen seemed to see the space around the figure in front of him ripple like water. And that boulder weighing over a hundred tons, containing tremendous impact force, was easily blocked by the figure ahead with just one hand. His body didn't even move back an inch, displaying an elegant posture. So powerful. At this moment, Gwen finally experienced what true power really was. You go help the other injured people. I'll take care of this guy. Accompanied by an unquestionable voice, Gwen saw the figure ahead single-handedly holding up the boulder well over a hundred tons, flying rapidly towards the green monster. This guy. Although his unquestionable tone made her feel a little uncomfortable. Still, Gwen followed his instructions, dragging her barely recovered body to rescue other injured civilians at full speed. On the other side, Peter, who was single-handedly holding up the hundred-ton boulder, had arrived in front of the four-handed Hulk. Looking down condescendingly at this monster who looked even uglier than the Hulk but was very muscular, Peter said slowly, We need to talk. Roar. Humblant. The Hulk, who could barely speak human words, just roared angrily at Peter in the air. All right, it seems some explosive special effects performance is needed now. Seeing the Hulk refuse to communicate, Peter didn't hesitate at all. He swung up the giant boulder in his hand like a huge spiked club and smashed it viciously at the Hulk on the ground. Boom. Of course, the Hulk would not just stand there and be smashed like a pole. It exerted force with both legs on the ground and leapt up instantly, clenching its fists and punching fiercely at the plummeting boulder overhead. However, the scene of the boulder shattering that the Hulk had anticipated did not appear. Perhaps its leap wasn't high enough, or the force of the hundred-ton boulder was not fully utilized. Anyway, at this moment, the Hulk was like a mosquito being slapped down and was fiercely smacked back onto the ground. Roar. Having suffered a setback for the first time, the Hulk instantly became extremely furious. It roared angrily at Peter in the air. Quiet. Without hesitation, Peter smashed the giant boulder in his hand fiercely at the roaring Hulk again. Bang! Although the Hulk reacted quickly and raised its four hands to resist, it was still hit hard by the impossibly large boulder. Its body was still barely holding up, but its legs had already sunk deeply into the ground. Let's see you roar again, come on! Peter completely turned the boulder in his hand into a giant hammer, treating the Hulk on the ground as a stake, pounding on it again and again relentlessly. The violent scene made people's scalps tingle just watching it. Boom. Crash. After more than a dozen continuous pounding, the giant boulder in Peter's hand finally couldn't withstand the damage. After the final blow, it completely shattered into pieces. At this moment, as for the Hulk, its figure had long disappeared from the ground, seemingly having been pounded deep into the ground. Roar. Suddenly, the Hulk's figure violently burst out from the ground behind Peter. Waving its fists, it charged towards Peter high up in the air. Humphrey, I found you a long time ago. Facing the sudden situation, Peter was not flustered at all. As his body elegantly turned around in midair, a dangerous red glow instantly surged up in his eyes. The Hulk was very fast. In less than a tenth of a second, it had already rushed in front of Peter. Its fists, which were truly as big as punching bags, were about to smash into Peter's face. Thud. However, a terrifying heat vision suddenly erupted from Peter's eyes. The terrifying heat vision instantly hit the Hulk's chest. The tremendous impact force blasted the pouncing Hulk along its original trajectory, and sent it flying. Bang! The Hulk's body smashed heavily onto the road surface, but the terrible heat vision still did not stop. The scorching high temperature carried an enormously massive impact force, pushing the Hulk's body to slide rapidly on the ground. Only after leaving behind a trench over a hundred meters long and several meters deep in the ground, did Peter finally slowly stop releasing the heat vision. The terrifying high temperature and tremendous impact force still left a distinctively massive wound on the Hulk's chest. The green skin was burned red and black like steel by the high temperature. Roar. The acute pain made the Hulk couldn't help but roar up to the sky. However, the Hulk's powerful self-healing ability was not just for show. 
The injuries on its body successfully healed within seconds, recovering completely as before. The next moment, the Hulk climbed up from the ground and leapt into the air again. Only this time, instead of charging at Peter in the air, it charged in the opposite direction. Trying to escape, Peter gave a cold snort, in his hands, almost no one could escape. His body accelerated abruptly, leaving a loud sonic boom in the air. Almost instantly, his figure appeared behind the Hulk that had just leapt into the air. His fist, as hard as steel, smashed heavily into the Hulk's body. Boom. The tremendous force actually blasted the Hulk's massive body and created a loud sonic boom. The Hulk's body was blasted away like a cannonball. The horrible impact made it directly penetrate a huge high-rise building, leaving behind a big black hole on it. It flew several kilometers away before finally falling into the sea next to a cross sea bridge, setting off a surge of water. In less than a second, a figure instantly appeared over the cross sea bridge. The speeding figure suddenly stopped, completely following Newton's coffin skidding on the ground. And the next moment, the calm sea surface suddenly exploded. The Hulk jumped out violently from within. The terrifying impact force directly blasted a hole under the cross sea bridge. Still, with undiminished momentum, it continued charging towards Peter high in midair. Whoosh! Facing the fiercely incoming Hulk, Peter lightly breathed out a gust of freeze breath. Silvery white icy mist instantly enveloped the Hulk's body. Creak creak. Under the Hulk's astonished gaze, it was frozen into a lump of crystal clear ice sculpture almost instantly. The next moment, Peter fiercely spiked the movement restricted Hulk with a slap, like hitting a volleyball, directly spiking it back onto the bridge. Crack. The frozen lump of Hulk smashed onto the cross sea bridge. The ice on its body shattered instantly. After violently shaking its head to regain consciousness, the Hulk suddenly stretched its four hands into the hole it just punctured through. The next moment, the entire cross sea bridge started shaking. Roar. With a furious roar, the Hulk at this moment seemed to explode its own little universe all of a sudden. It directly lifted up a section of the cross sea bridge weighing thousands of tons and smashed it at Peter in midair. Chapter 30, Humans Looking Up on the bridge, countless vehicles that were driving had to stop due to the Hulk's appearance. Some that couldn't break in time rear-ended each other. What happened ahead? Was there a car accident? On the congested lanes, many people got out of their vehicles and looked ahead. Run. There's a monster on the bridge. However, the next moment, accompanied by screams and panicked pedestrians fleeing, their actions told them what exactly had happened up ahead. Oh my god, what on earth is that thing? Seeing an entire section of the bridge being slowly lifted, everyone was filled with shock. Unbelievable, that monster actually lifted up an entire bridge. In the air, the media who had learned about the appearance of a monster in New York had long sent reporters. At this moment, they were on helicopters, using cameras to record everything happening on the bridge. Incredible, just how powerful is that monster? The audience watching everything on TV couldn't help but be shocked by the monster's power. No matter how powerful that monster is, it absolutely can't defeat Superman. Among them were also Peter's staunch supporters. The Hulk swung the bridge weighing thousands of tons rapidly through the air, even causing a violent gale. Under the howling winds, the gigantic bridge smashed fiercely towards Peter in midair. The angrier it gets, the stronger its power seems to become. At this moment, as the Hulk suddenly erupted with such horrifying power, the casual look on Peter's face gradually disappeared as well, and he became serious. In its normal form, with Peter's current strength, he could have easily crushed the Hulk. But if the Hulk's power grows stronger as it gets angrier, with no upper limit, then Peter would also have to be more careful in dealing with it. After all, Peter remembered that in the comics, the Hulk was capable of destroying the Earth. As Superman, protecting my Earth is an obligatory duty. In an instant, Peter rushed towards the gigantic bridge swung at him by the Hulk. His eyes erupted directly with crimson glow. Sizzle sizzle sizzle. The scorching heat vision containing boiling heat and tremendous impact force blazed a path up front, dancing like an extremely sharp beam sabber. Even the sturdy bridge at this moment seemed to have turned into tofu that could be easily sliced. The entire bridge section was swiftly cut apart by Peter. While he charged towards the Hulk below in his godly body without hesitation. Bang bang bang. Countless giant boulders cut into pieces heavily smashed onto the bridge, causing the entire bridge to start shaking continuously. In just a few seconds, the bridge weighing thousands of tons that was lifted by the Hulk, was cut down to just a small section. 
and at this moment, Peter had finally rushed up to the Hulk. The fiery heat vision from his eyes fired mercilessly at the Hulk's face. At the same time, he swung his right fist and punched heavily at the Hulk's body. Sizzle sizzle sizzle. Facing Peter's attack this time, the Hulk seemed to have learned to be smarter. First, it crossed its upper two arms in front to block Peter's oncoming heat vision. Then it used the other two hands to block Peter's punch at itself. And after successfully blocking it, the Hulk directly grabbed Peter's arms with both hands. It pulled forcefully outward as if trying to compete in strength with Peter, even tearing his arms off his body altogether. Not good, Superman was grabbed by that monster. Will our Superman be able to resolve this crisis and successfully defeat the monster? Let's cheer for him. The reporter in the helicopter high up fulfilled his duties steadfastly. But his expression was also full of concern for the restrained Superman. Superman, go for it, you are the strongest. Go for it, justice will surely triumph over evil. Sometimes, the line between justice and evil is not so clear. Compared to the ugly Hulk, even if Superman had behaved very arrogantly and selfishly before, and had hardly done anything to help others. At this moment, he undoubtedly represented true justice. You think I don't know? You want to use dozens of times enhanced strength to completely suppress me? The reason I gave up the advantage of flight and engaged in close combat with you is because my power right now is far greater than yours. Thinking of the system prompt that just sounded, a smile gradually appeared on Peter's face. Congratulations, host, your super strength has successfully awakened. Roar. The Hulk, who was still gaining the upper hand in strength with its four arms firmly locking Peter earlier, suddenly discovered an unmatched, horrifying surge of power exploding from within this puny human's body. Almost instantly, it felt an almost irresistible tremendous force coming from the arms grabbing the opponent's arms. Ah! The enormous force directly tore its arms off its body. Thick green blood gushed out instantly. It's time for you to cool down. Peter, who easily ripped off the Hulk's arms, held the Hulk by the neck without hesitation and rushed into the clouds instantly. Oh my god, they actually rushed out of the atmosphere. It's a pity that our camera can no longer continue to capture them. The reporter in the helicopter looked at the one person and one monster who disappeared into the sky instantly with a bit of regret on his face. But Superman is our hero. He saved the entire New York City. Ha ha, luckily I have an astronomical telescope. Watching Superman disappear from the TV, an astronomy enthusiast in New York excitedly ran to the balcony. But he seemed to have gotten excited too soon. With the field of view of a telescope, it was almost impossible to capture such tiny human figures in the vast universe. Just when he left the balcony disappointed, preparing to check other news channels for more news about Superman, he suddenly discovered someone in his astronomy enthusiasts group had posted a new message. Everyone look at the moon. General Ross. They have left the city limits. Can we launch nuclear missiles to completely eliminate that terrifying monster? As well as that, God. At this moment, in a confidential video conference that only top military generals and politician officials could attend, a politician dressed in an expensive suit slowly spoke up, proposing to General Ross. In fact, whether it was the powerful, terrifying monster, or the godlike Superman, they were actually like the sword of Damocles hanging over the heads of all government officials not knowing when this sword would suddenly chop off their heads. With such a good opportunity now to eliminate both at once, how could it not tempt them? Mr. Vice President, your suggestion is as naive as a child's. That Superman's speed far exceeds any known aircraft we have. Even if we launch nuclear missiles, we can't catch up to the target. After all, our Superman won't be willing to endure bombing of human nuclear missiles in order to eliminate monsters like in comics. What's more? Our nuclear missiles may not even be able to harm him. Moreover, according to observations by our military satellites, they are about to land on the moon. As a military man, General Ross had a clearer idea of Superman's power. Especially a Superman without compassion or restraint in his actions. That was almost a true god on Earth. Mr. Vice President, I hope you will voluntarily submit your resignation to Congress tomorrow. You are clearly unqualified for this position with the way you treat our human hero. Another politician, who seemed to be of higher rank, finally spoke up slowly. He instantly sentenced the vice president who made the suggestion to death. Then he stopped paying attention to the sullen vice president, and slowly continued speaking to General Ross instead. General Ross, can you mobilize satellites to show images of the moon right now? 
I want to witness with my own eyes how our human hero defeats the evil monster. As he spoke, his face revealed an excited expression, as if happy that justice was gaining ultimate victory. Chapter 31, Above the Moon In the vast and boundless universe, a god from the human world has arrived. To cross the universe in a fleshly body, is absolutely impossible in the human worldview. How can this version of Hulk barely adapt to the harsh cosmic environment? Looking at the Hulk he was holding, after arriving in space, he only became extremely weak but still did not completely fall unconscious. Even the severed part of his arm that was just ripped off, there was actually a bit of flesh squirming, as if it was trying to self-repair. As expected, nothing less from the one with the toughest vitality. Seeing that Hulk did not completely calm down due to the harsh cosmic universe environment, Peter's gaze slowly turned towards the moon, 38,000 kilometers away from Earth. The next moment, he directly threw the Hulk in his hand fiercely towards the direction of the moon. And his whole body accelerated instantly, almost catching up to the Hulk he'd just thrown in an instant. Then a fierce punch directly blasted Hulk's body. In an instant, Hulk who was already thrown by Peter to a speed exceeding the speed of sound, accelerated tens of times faster. And Peter accelerated again, after awakening his super strength, a punch tens of thousands of times stronger than before, fiercely blasted on Hulk's body again. Thus, Peter threw punches after punches, from outer space of Earth, directly to the moon. The moon that takes human probes several days to reach. Under Peter's constant acceleration now, it only took less than 20 minutes to reach near the moon's surface. And now, Hulk's speed has reached an incomparable level. Peter also finally gave up on continuing his pursuit, his figure instantly stopped in the universe a hundred kilometers away from the surface of the moon, his eyes calmly looking at Hulk who was rushing toward the moon. At the same time on Earth, preparations for satellites to observe the moon's surface are finally complete. However, even with several of the military's most advanced satellites combined for observation, the rendered image is still not very clear. One can only see from afar a tiny black dot like a mosquito above the silvery white moon, unable to make out any specific actions. But after delicate image processing, everyone present could see that the black dot above the moon was their hero, Superman. What is our hero doing now? Looking at the images sent back by the satellite, everyone felt puzzled. But the scene happening the next moment answered their doubts in the most shocking way possible. One could see an extremely powerful explosion suddenly happen on the calm moon's surface, blasting up a huge mushroom dust cloud tens of kilometers tall. The terrifying shock wave of the explosion, visibly spread out rapidly to the surroundings, even whipping up a horrifying dust storm on the moon. In just a few seconds, the shock wave had already swept the entire observable moon surface by human satellites, and still spreading towards the moon's far side. Even on Earth, one could vaguely see with naked eyes the spreading process of the shock wave on the moon's surface. What, on Earth just happened? Looking at such a horrifying scene, the vice president who had just been dismissed felt his body going completely limp, eyes wide open looking unbelievingly at the horrifying scene happening on the moon. It took nearly ten full minutes for the swirling dust on the moon to finally settle down slowly. At this moment, when almost everyone was looking at the shocking scene on the surface of the moon, they could not help but show an incomparably shocked expression. Because, at this moment, on the surface of the moon, a huge crater with a diameter of nearly thousands of kilometers had appeared. How is this possible? Countless people found the scene before their eyes unbelievable. And the vice president who just proposed to nuke Superman now almost seemed to have gone mad, constantly murmuring, this is impossible, absolutely impossible. The conference room was dead silent for nearly three full minutes. Has the estimated precise energy value of that explosion been deduced? Even in a high position, the government official still could not keep calm in his eyes now. Sigh. At this moment, General Ross just received a simple prediction report about the recent explosion. Upon seeing the information in the report, even as a general, he couldn't help but gasp. Mr. President, according to our staff's simple prediction, the crater formed on the moon's surface from the recent explosion has a diameter of about 800 to 900 kilometers, approximately one quarter of the moon's diameter. Of course, that's because the environment on the moon is special, the surface oil is loose, making it easier to create such a gigantic crater. If the same explosive power occurred on Earth, the resulting crater would probably be over ten times smaller. Phew, that's a relief then. Hearing this explanation, the president finally heaved a deep sigh of relief. However, 
the general's following words made his heart tense up again. After simple calculations, the explosive power is equivalent to hundreds of millions of tons of TNT, several times more powerful than the Tsar bomber dropped by Russia last century. If such an attack lands in the center of New York, then the entire New York will be completely erased from the earth. Taking a deep breath, General Ross finally came out of the shock after seeing this report. At this moment, he truly realized what a god on earth means. The entire New York City would erased from the earth? Muttering the predicted outcome to himself, the president still could not maintain a calm expression. Suddenly, the president's expression became extremely solemn, then he directly stood up. From now on, no organizations or intelligence agencies are allowed to probe into any intelligence regarding Superman without permission. Also, organize disaster relief efforts as soon as possible, minimize the damage that monster has caused to New York City, and complete reconstruction at the fastest speed possible. Well, since that's the case, let's create a new department specializing in disaster relief work in the future. Let's call it the Disaster Control Bureau, Damage Control, or DC for short. Finally, once the meeting concludes, the military and government will jointly send personnel to supervise all media outlets and publishers nationwide. I don't want any media or publisher tomorrow to smear our hero to all mankind. At this time, above the moon, Peter was looking calmly at the horrifying scene he created. After everything gradually settled down, his figure instantly accelerated and rushed towards the center of the deep crater on the moon's surface. Arriving at the crater's center and looking at Hulk whose entire body was ravaged by the terrifying shock wave without an inch of good skin left, already fallen completely unconscious. Peter's face finally revealed a smile. At the same time, a system prompt sounded in his mind. Congratulations host, subdue the mad Hulk mission completed. Reward Kryptonian technology, Doomsday Manufacturing has been successfully issued. Listening to the successfully issued reward prompt after mission completion, and looking at the heavily injured Hulk in the crater, a satisfied smile appeared at the corner of Peter's mouth. Chapter 32, Nanoparticle Experiment Succeeds. Fantasy reflects reality. Humanity has the honor of welcoming its greatest hero, Superman. The next day after that night, the entire New York City, even the entire world, was propagating a piece of information. Whether it was the huge screens on the city streets or the headlines of the newspapers displayed in the newsstands in alleys, they were all about that majestic figure. Superman's name resounded throughout the world overnight, praised by all media and news outlets. And he was crowned as the greatest hero of mankind. Hey, it looks like it's trying to hold me with moral abduction. On the way to school, as he casually glanced at the newspaper in his hand, Peter instantly understood their purpose for doing this. Unfortunately, I have no morals. Or rather, I have a flexible moral baseline. Casually tearing the newspaper in his hand into pieces, he threw it into the trash can on the street, ignoring the countless pedestrians around him who were talking about himself and the change of the moon's surface, and slowly walked towards the school. Did you guys watch the live broadcast last night? Superman was so cool. However, Peter wouldn't get any peace and quiet today. As soon as he walked into the classroom, he heard several classmates gathered together, excitedly discussing what had happened last night. That's right, Superman is so powerful that the ugly monster was no match at all. If I had Superman's powerful strength, I would definitely. He he he. A black kid kept gesturing with his hands, as if he was the one who fought the Hulk last night. HMPH, I think Superman is too distant from us. Maybe just like in comics, he is an alien from another planet and who knows what his purpose is for coming to Earth. Flash, with a plaster cast on his arm and bandages wrapped around him, shrank his neck in fear when he saw Peter walk into the classroom. But seeing that Peter just went back to the seat he sat in yesterday, and didn't seem to have any intention of coming over to cause trouble, he regained his courage and continued to discuss last night's events with his little brothers. FCK, Flash, are you tired of living? Don't you know Superman has super hearing? Aren't you afraid of Superman coming to settle accounts with you for saying that? One of his minions, upon hearing Flash actually 